In Tarantino's latest film, Jackie Brown, a longtime fan of her work in such 70s classics as Coffee and Foxy Brown, Tarantino wrote the script with Greer specifically in mind. It is based on the 1995 Elmore Leonard novel, Rum Punch, and it will open on Christmas Day. She was also, get this, ladies and gentlemen, just nominated for a Golden Globe Award as Best Actress in a Comedy or a Musical, so we are doubly pleased to have her on this little old broadcast this evening. Welcome. Oh, Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, thank hey, you. Thank you so huh? much. Thank you, Q. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you Q. Hey, what do you call him? Q -T? Q -T? Q -T? Q oh, man, that's not bad. Nomination right here. Oh, no. As, as well as Samuel L. Jackson. Two, I know. Two it's... actors. And the best director right there. Mm -hmm. And the best writer right there. What makes him? Oh, but I don't want to talk about him. We've talked about oh, him. No, Let's no. talk about you. Uh, <laughs> what was this like for you? Mm -hmm. You know, he told me the story that when he called you up and said, I got this something for you. And you said, well, I'm busy. I mean, I got a lot of stuff to do. Hey, man, you got something for me. You know, get in line. And he said, no, I got something really big for you. Right? Yeah. 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 Was it? It was really big. And he, you know, was he's a director and writer in demand. Right? Mm -hmm. The biggest stores, the biggest people want him. Right. And he's going to tell me he's going to invest two years of his life to write something for me, and I'm gonna believe it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and then he tells me again another year later, I'm gonna, okay, now this has got to stop. Okay, you know, don't don't break my little heart. Don't, you know. <laughs> and uh, and then one day he calls and he says, Look, I'm gonna send you something. Mm -hmm. You know, um, read the role Jackie Brown. Tell me what you think. You know, okay, it doesn't come right away. And I'm like, I'm not because it took him two years, and I'm just gonna sit here coolly, not you know get. I'm gonna get sleep. I'm gonna I'm gonna relax, and then it, it came, and there it is. And it's like first I always look at the end of the script to see how many pages. <laughs> then I flip through and see if how many how many pages I'm on. And then I go 267. <laughs> oh, I'm going really. I'm going. Oh wow! And I'm like this. And I'm like, oh my god, this is it. Quentin Tarantino. And I start reading it. And I'm reading it. I'm looking like, now, Elmo Leonard is one of the most prolific writers. I mean, you can smell and taste and feel his characters on the page. And now they're popping out. And Quentin, stop. I'm, it's like so mind-boggling. I'm going to have to read it again. And I'm just overwhelmed, I mean, by the sheer fact that someone would sit down and write something for me and have the confidence to say, here, read it. First, read it. I'm thinking, I didn't tell him. I didn't call him right away to tell him how good it was and that his, his style, because I was so afraid. They said, well, I just wanted you to read it and see if you liked it, and we're not going to do it, and I just wanted to see, you know, if you liked it. And I was like, oh, because I don't want to have my, my heart broken on something that's so good, you know. And I understand that I, I didn't call him right away, so Quentin was thinking I didn't like it. And he's like, oh, my God, she hasn't called. She didn't like it. And so uh, finally my boyfriend, Kevin, said, I think you better call Clint and let him know that you like it before he <laughs> cast somebody you know else. Phone, Sam. And I said, you know what? You're right, Kevin. Again. I call him up. Again. <laughs> I call him up. And, and I tell Quentin, you know, and it's like, first I'm stumbling. I don't know how to say it from my heart, you know, the depths of my heart, my gratitude. And I tell him, I said, you did a really good job. You did really, really good. And it's your style. And it was, you know, the book is his novel and, the, and, and, and adapting it to his style, a screenplay, how you work it and everything, the characters. And that's some work. That I means it's a monumental effort. And I just told him, I said, this is so great. You know, um, I said, I, I love it. He says, well, you're Jackie Brown. Do you have, speaking of that, I mean, he sat here and talked in the conversation we did together about needing a Pam. Greer for this. Mm -hmm. Didn't think of anybody else. Because of some sense of presence, command that you have. Do you feel that? Do you know that about yourself? I mean, that you are... I was, I've been informed <laughs> when I do you the work. Feel, you internalize. You yes, know it. You yeah. know that I know it more now. I didn't have... presence. I, I know more now. I, I, don't, I didn't have a real strong sense of self, and it's not that I didn't believe in myself, but I I know what I do, but I learn more from the reaction that people give me. That I've d I did the work, all the you know I I, I mattered. Um, 
I let other people tell me because sometimes I really don't know what I do because I'm in the moment and I'm really not thinking of how well I did it or what did I do. So other people inform me that I, of my presence and and I've just never really thought of that. And other people make me aware. Quentin, he's always telling me about you have this, you do that, you yeah. go and I go. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> really? When you made all those, how many films did you make that are now called black exploitation <coughs> films? I would say about oh. four, three or four. It was Coffee, Foxy, Brown, and Sheba. And I don't know if you include Scream, Black, Hula Scream, or Friday Foster. I think the black exploitation ones were meant for the, the amount of sexuality and action and uh, uh, jokes, tongue in cheek, you know, yeah. adult, yeah. Uh, adult uh, entertainment. I think just three, really. When those ended, when that sort of demand for those ended, what did you think about where you were going to go, and is that where you went? Well, for me, personally and professionally, I chose not to do them anymore because it's not that I was ashamed of them or didn't like them. I really I adored them. I loved them because it really exemplified pop culture, African-American pop culture at that time. Right. Because the 70s really was the basic rewards for the 50s and 60s political gains. So we went crazy with music and afros and hair and we were part of the sexual movement and the women's movement. And so I really enjoyed it and I look upon it very favorably and I've, I've never been embarrassed by it because my work, I was a novice. You know, I wasn't really well studied and well trained, but I look at them as something that exemplified and documented the culture, and it was something that I looked forward to. Just wh what is it going to say at the end of the day? What are people going to really think of it? I don't really know. All I know is it's about us and it's about me. And you know, I'm the type of person I can't. I let everybody else think about you know what they are to them. But yeah, you know, yeah. Pam has a really uh, <clears throat> unique place in film history, though with uh, the films that she did in the black exploitation time because they had a whole like star system even set up in the black in the black pictures you know Jim Brown Fred Williamson Jim Kelly these were all big stars and Pam was one of the hugest ones there was but with Jim Brown like for, for instance the people are doing an article about him they refer to him as the the black Clint Eastwood and they can refer to Fred Williamson as like the black uh, Burt Reynolds or Jim Kelly as the black Bruce Lee they could never find a white, even though they bent over backwards, they could never find a white equivalent for who, what Pam Star was, for what she was, because there really wasn't a white action female hero star. You know, that her name was above the title, Pam Greer is coffee, Pam Greer is Foxy Brown, that w uh, people would go and see, to see her in this action role. There wasn't one like it before, and then when she stopped making them, there wasn't anybody to take her place. She really owned a spot for women in the 70s with those films that America had really never seen before or since. And I, I didn't want to be redundant, because I had already made, said what I needed to say. And if I continue, if I continued, we had already found the black audience, right. and they're following it and becoming more astute each time they see a movie. And we're starting to lose them now because everybody is jumping on the same formula I'm working on mm -hmm. at a American International Pictures. Now I can see because they're coming to me and saying, "Why can't we do something different? Why can't we say something different?" And now I feel that they're getting bored, and that's when I decided to say, "You know what?" I need to go to another level. I need to find out where I can go and where I can take this audience. I want to pick that up in just a moment. Take a look at this. Just in case you have not seen what we're talking about, here is Foxy Brown. Leave her alone, Jack. They're friends of ours. Oh, 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 <laughs> I come from a long line of skillet throwing women, yeah. you know, so <laughs> I aerobics in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, what did you do after that? Well, you decided to take control to go a different direction. What happened? Well, I was growing as an actor and, you know, finding my sense of self and redefining who I was as a person. And you see a lot of that and then you, you understand the political agenda. People say, why don't you do more? dramatic historical pieces why don't you you know because now i've got an audience i've got the the attention of the filmmakers the pro producers behind me and then that's what i started asking well what do you think about making something like those and they said no let's stick to the you know let's sell the the action this and that and i said we're well, going to lose the audience so by then i was backing out of it and whatever happened
happened to the other filmmakers and Jim Brown and Fred, then that was, you know, their own choice. But I had to move on uh, personally and, and professionally. Do you think there's a market? I mean, I've often been amazed at what I think is out there in terms of the buying power mm. of the African-American community. Mm -hmm. Buying power. Right, exactly. You know? mm -hmm. Huge demand. Mm -hmm. Huge influence in terms of television, mm -hmm. in terms of people who watch television, influence television. Is it being served? So, I mean, do you think the movies that are being made today mm -hmm are res responsive to what that market is. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know. Soul Food was made. Yeah. Eve's Bayou. Yeah. Um, Which I haven't seen, but everybody says. Oh, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's seen it? Yes, I have. <laughs> it's glorious. Uh, from Julie Dash to... There's so many, you know, films that are coming. Not... Well, like you said, it's the box office, the demand and who's going to pay right. for them. You know, there's only so much money, so much time, and so much creativity. I don't know if we're serving them in mass, yeah. but it's coming. There are more and more different, diverse films that are coming out. And uh, you'll see from some of the plays that are coming out, they're going to be turned into films from Fences. And mm -hmm. I just think it, it's it's slow. Fences is being made into films. Fences will, August will be, yeah. yeah. Um, and so it, it, it takes time, but it also... It's something that's not overnight, and I don't know who's controlling what, when, where, and how. But as long as they get made, yeah. well, you, you know, that's important. It's very interesting, and also, um, Spike Lee had said something when uh, he had done She's Gotta Have It. Because <clears throat> about the time when he came out with She's Gotta Have It, that was probably the longest period of time that basically black culture had really not been reflected in the Hollywood mainstream, unless you're considering Eddie Murphy. All right. Okay. Yeah. With the exception of Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, for like a large chunk of the 80s. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. surprised that blacks went to the movies at all. I can't believe that they, you know, would go and not see themselves represented on the screen. And Spike Lee said something when he did She's Gotta Have It. He said that uh, black audiences were getting sort of overwhelmed watching She's Gotta Have It because it had been that it had been so long since they'd seen black people kissing on screen. Mm -hmm. Think about mm -hmm. that. Sure. Think about that. Never seeing your own people reflected even in a kiss mm -hmm. on screen. Mm -hmm. The love scene. Yeah. There was, you didn't see that often and you, you didn't see them very much in my films a little later. Mm -hmm. But no, it's, it's, it was really rare. And they talk about that today. Not enough passionate love scenes, but in Eve's Bayou, you see it. Mm -hmm. You're seeing it more and more in Soul Food. It, it's just not... Well, they did it in your not, movies. They did it in your movies, for sure. They did it in the mm -hmm. 70s, but there was just this period where they just blacks weren't being represented on in screen. The, well, in the 80s, definitely. It was yeah. a very rigid time, a very conservative time, a very Republican time, where the themes weren't about uh, people of color. They were basically about mainstream box office dollars. What would you like to come out of this experience in Jackie Brown? Um, what do you hope it achieves? Well, it has achieved quite a bit. The fact that when Quentin asked me to to portray Jackie Brown, and, and he's going to demand a lot of me, of Pam, and my, it's my tenure on this planet, my commitment to the role, to work with him and Samuel Jackson, Robert De Niro, Michael Keaton, Bridget, and Robert Forster, and, and, and show a lot of me reveal a lot of me uh, that I haven't revealed uh, and not asked to. Quentin allowed me to go certain places as an actor that no other director would, would had required or asked. And I've achieved personally and professionally so much. And if the audience enjoys it and they, they feel what I've felt and I have brought, given depth and, and texture and color and pain and all kinds of emotionality of mine to Jackie and people can feel it and they go yeah I feel Jackie I've had those days I've lost things I've gained this and they come away saying I really enjoyed seeing that character because there's not a lot of character driven movies it's usually action you don't get to know the characters you think they're robots you think they're one dimension there's a dimension so many dimensions to Jackie at the end of the day all I wanted to do was a good job did it cause you, does it cause you, knowing the reaction, to change your dreams? Well, as far as changing my dreams, my dreams of? What you want to do and how you see your own... Well, I, I've never dreamt about getting the big part. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've never dreamt of working 
with anyone, although in reality, I would like to and hope I get the opportunity to. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean oh, a dream. Amazing. If it's a dream. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, I mean, you, you never thought about working with De Niro, for example, or... No, no. And I had they, met him as, as a person outside of the business. And if you're considering, you know, like those type of dreams, um, to be a part of the fabric yeah. of the industry, to be another texture, uh, uh, from you know my, not only my upbringing, my humor, being living in in Europe, living in America, <laughs> all the different textures that people can bring to the industry. That's that's all you know. I can do, and I, I just want them to see that I can do it well. I, I, it's not that I don't have aspirations. I do. I love writing. I have screenplays. I I like to you know get off the ground. Um, and there's people I would like to work with, uh, but it's something that if it didn't happen. I'd be okay. You're going to be okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you it's for inviting me. It's a pleasure to have you here. Pam Greer, stars in Jackie Brown. Uh, and thank you, sir. My pleasure. Great to have you here. <laughs>